also going to begin my talk with um, a Greek story between, it's actually in a movie, um, Troy, and it's a talk between, it's a discussion between um, Achilles and his mother, Titus. Um, Achilles is asking his mom what to do if he's going to join the Trojan War or will stay in their place. So the mom says there are two things that you can actually do. The first, you stay here, you get married, your wife will love you, you'll have kids, and your kids will follow you. But when you die, that's it. No one will actually remember you. The other one, the other option is that you can go to Troy and fight for, for Greece, but, and in, in the process you're going, your name will be known. Your story will be told over and over again, and you'll be immortalized by that. But in that glory comes your doom. And we know what Achilles, uh, what's the decision of Achilles, right? It's the latter. He chooses the glory and doom. Now, I'm not going to, um, I don't want to um, concentrate on the doom, but the glory itself, because optimism is a good trait, right? So, um, immortality is a hankering dream that was and is um, uh, dreamt by a lot of people. You can see this in ancient history books. It is a recurring theme in ancient literature, but it's anything but ancient. We can still see it today. It lingers in our generation today. We can see it in the horizon saying, take it, it's yours. It's still part of the script in, in, in Troy. So how can we actually achieve immortality? I'm uh, an English literature teacher, so you know that I'm talking about metaphors, right? So um, um, some people decided to write books, invent things, create and do things, and in the process, it eludes death itself. The people like William Shakespeare, Mahatma Gandhi, Karl Marx, Marie Curie, um, Albert Einstein, Mother Teresa, those are the names that you know, immortalize themselves with the things that they actually did that make us remember them. But there are also some people that's actually unknown and they are unsung heroes who did things to help create the narrative of the world today. And that's what we're going to discuss further. That's what I'm going to elaborate further. Um, let me start with my own story. Um, I was an average student. My my brothers and sisters are the one who's, you know, constant, um, constant honor students. They're always on stage because um, uh, they're being given medals, and I'm always on the side clapping at them. I love it because they are my, my, my brothers. They are my siblings. But it doesn't mean that even if I'm, I'm actually an average student, it doesn't mean that I have an average dream. I want to change the world. Probably some of you will laugh. How can I possibly change the world? I'm just one person. Um, after graduating the university, I immediately um, landed a job, an eight to five job. And it was actually then, it's a pivotal moment in my life where I actually started asking myself, what is it really that I want to do with my life? Because eight to five job is like, you know, imprisoning me to what I really wanted to do. So is this what I really wanted to you know, continue this kind of life and to dissolve later on. It was then the teaching comes along. For some people, teaching is a noble, noble profession, but for me, it's more than that. I, I'm not sure, but I hope that most of the teachers that we have here know, that, know this fact that we are actually crafting the future. We are the architect of the future. Because it's in, actually in us, we could basically... Um, try to engage kids to do different things so that they can, um, they, they will basically know what they want. But when I say um, engaging them, what kind of things do we actually need to do? Henry Adams once said that um, teacher affects eternity. We can never tell when their influence stops. 
And I believe in that because I remember some part of me is this professor of mine way back in the university who teaches me the beauty of teaching. He's an atheist. I was born and raised Catholic, but it's, it's never an issue how we can actually understand each other. Um, so what happened then is that uh, I remember again another um, well-known person is Aristotle. He said that. Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. That is my advocacy. Uh, I've been teaching for more than 10 years. In fact, this is my 10th year here in Binus. And every year, I keep on thinking what are the ways that I, I can make the assessment different from one another. I cannot just give them... Uh, you know, an essay, which is inherently English. So I tried to do certain things. And I, I tried to remember what's the reason why I'm teaching. And so one time, five years ago, I remember I, I created um, an assessment entitled Heroes Project. I, uh, the reason why I come up with that one is because I'm teaching Greek heroes during the time. So this hero, what is this project about? This, hero is, this Heroes Project is about kids doing heroic things. But then when I say heroic, it doesn't have to, they don't need to risk their life to do certain things. The only thing that they have to do is um, to help somebody that is not their friend, that is not a member of the family, somebody that they don't know. And so after that, they need to come back to class and explain what they did, the process, what they learned, the reflection of what they did. Now, a lot of students, it's actually an en enlightening thing for me as well because I realized that most of the kids want those kind of assessments. But the reason why I'm telling you this story is because of this one um, student I remembered. He's now in grade, uh, grade 12. I'm not going to tell you his name. He's a big student tall and big student, and when he started explaining his um, um, project, he started crying. And I said, why? But all of the kids knows the story. I'm the only one who don't. And then I asked why. He said, um, their project, they went to an orphanage, and so they actually were assigned different kind of tasks, and he's assigned to play with kids. And he saw this two-year-old blind orphan who likes to play with him. But every time he touches his hand, this two-year-old will run away. He doesn't want his hand to be held. And he said that that's actually the pivotal moment in his life in which he realizes that here he is, big, tall, and burly guy who's always dependent to his parents and to his friends. And here comes this two-year-old blind kid who wants to be independent. This is what I am um, looking for in teaching. This is what feeds me as a teacher. I know that I, we cannot actually earn a lot of money in teaching, but this is what makes me, this is the very reason why I am teaching. And so ultimately, the goal of my talk today is to encourage everyone to pursue an advocacy. Something that could bring back the trust in humanity. Why am I actually doing this? I was actually like, I grew up um, discussing with my dad about, you know, what's happening in the world today. He's actually the one who, who opened my eyes that the world is actually how we see it on television. The politics is so different from how we in, understand it. We talk about different kinds of things, religious um, um, talk, social, um, social events, and politics. And he's the one who opened my mind that we need people to actually do positive things so that we can see that the future is not going to be that blick, that the future is actually good. So my goal, I'm not asking everyone to be like Mahatma Gandhi or um, Mother Teresa, but it should be, we should do something that we really care about, something that comes from our heart, something that we're, we, we care passionately 
Why? Why do we need to do that? Because if not us, I, I'm going to quote um, um, one of this person who said, if it's not me, who? If not us, who? So um, the, the process of this um, project is that we, when we actually do things that comes from the heart, it doesn't matter if, we only affect the, if it only affects the life of one person. Because if this person, what if this person will actually um, motivate another person to follow the lead and this person will um, enlighten another one to continue? Can you imagine the infinite possibility? The positive thing that could happen to our world if that same thing could actually happen. I believe that human, that we, human is bestowed with um, boundless compassion. It is only in times in which we put ourselves first, diminishes that empathy that is known to exist in us all. We will all die eventually, all of us, our physical body at least. But if Dying would leave an energy that will be used and will continuously used to continue the flow or the cycle. Those small energies would serve like a small conduits of light that would link, that would link us to the very core of humanity. Again, it's, it's, it's like, how can we say no to that? If that force would actually be the constant force that will drive the humanity to its glory or doom, what will you choose? I choose glory. What about you? Thank you very much.